and other property or polygon properties activity that the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics shows in the Teaching Children Mathematics May 10 uh, magazine shows students who are working with the GeoBoard uh, creating concave and convex polygons and it's easy using the GeoBoard because all you have to do is move the rubber band and you change from one shape to another and it shows here the little girl doing doing that. Um, it also shows the students um, creating a, a table and in that table they are showing or sorting uh, the concave and the convex polygons into categories and these are third graders but this could be extended into having the students not just sort by concave, convex, but you could have the students sort by properties. Um, in category one, put all polygons that have parallel sides. Um, in category two, put all polygons that have acute angles. And then questions that you can uh, begin asking the students as they work. Um, can a triangle have more than one obtuse angle? Uh, can a triangle have three acute angles? Can a triangle or a quadrilateral have exactly two right angles? So questions that make them think and here they are with their shapes and the floor sorting. Um, other questions describe each group of uh, shapes. Uh, what do the shapes in each group have in common? What's different about the shapes? Do any groups share something in common with another group? And so on. In the lecture for this segment, we are going to begin using graph paper and talk a little bit about coordinate geometry. So I'm going to give you some ordered pairs and ask that you graph those ordered pairs on a coordinate system. So I have A with the ordered pair 3, 5, B the ordered pair 7, 6, C the ordered pair 6, 2, and D the ordered pair 2, 1. So I make my coordinate system. Graph A, B, C, and D. Then with a straight edge, I'm going to connect to make a quadrilateral. Okay, now I can kind of guess about what it is. Kind of looks like a parallelogram. Might be a rhombus. But for it to be a rhombus, all four sides have to be the same length. And for it to be a uh, 
parallelogram, opposite sides have to be congruent and opposite sides have to be parallel. So I can set up an equation to find out whether the sides are parallel by looking at the slope. So first I will check the slope. So I can take the ordered pairs for A and B and remember the slope is the change in the Y values over the change in the X values. So I have 6 minus 5 over 7 minus 3. So that is 1 fourth. So the slope for AB is 1 fourth. Now if I check the slope for DC, I would take the difference in the Y's, 2 minus 1, over the difference in the X's, 6 minus 2, and that is 1 fourth. So DC also has a slope of one-fourth. That means that these two lines are parallel. So we put arrows on those parallel lines to show in the graph they are. And I can make a statement that segment AB is parallel to segment CD. All right, now I need to check the slope for AD. So I use the ordered pairs for AD, which would be 5 minus 1 over 3 minus 2. So the slope is 4 over 1. And now I check the slope for BC. So I'll take 6 minus 2 over 7 minus 6 and that 2 is 4 over 1. Now I know that these lines are not perpendicular because they do have reciprocal slopes but they're not negative reciprocal so the signs have to be different for the lines to be perpendicular but I do know by looking at the lines that both sets of lines are parallel. So that means probably that this is at least a parallelogram. But to be a parallelogram, opposite sides have to also be equal to each other. And therefore, we can use the distance formula, which is a takeoff of the Pythagorean theorem. To find the length of a segment, you take the difference in the y value squared added to the difference in the x values squared. So the length of segment AB would be the square root of 6 minus 5 squared plus 7 minus 3 squared. So the length of that segment is 6 minus 5, which is 1 squared, 7 minus 3, which is 4 squared. So the length of that segment is 1 plus 16, or the square root of 17. So AB has a length of the square root of 17. Now, if all four of these sides have a length of the square root of 17, then this is a rhombus. If just opposite sides are equal, then it is a parallelogram. So let's check side BC. <coughs> so I take the square root of the difference in the Y values, 6 minus 2 squared, and 7 minus 6 squared. So the distance is the square root 
6 minus 2 is 4 squared. 7 minus 6 is 1 squared. So the distance is the square root of 17. So it's looking like maybe this is going to be a rhombus. But I need to check these two sides before I make my conclusion. So that's what you're going to be doing in the next shapes that I give you. You're going to judge whether uh, what kind of quadrilateral that it is based on whether it has slopes that are equal, which makes it parallel, or slopes that are negative reciprocals, which makes it perpendicular. And again, what I mean by negative reciprocal is if I have one-fourth, the negative reciprocal to that would be negative 4 over 1. And if those slopes occur, the lines are perpendicular. Alright, these are the problems that I would like for you to do. J is the ordered pair 2-1. K is the ordered pair 5, 4. L is the ordered pair 7, 2. And M is the ordered pair 2, negative 3. The second one, R is the ordered pair negative 2, 3. S is the ordered pair 4, 0. T is the ordered pair 3, 2, and V is the ordered pair negative 3, negative 1. So check the slope, check the length, make your conclusion. I want you to show your work and then upload that into Blackboard.